Okay, welcome everybody to the 2019 AMATIC webinar series. Um, we've got a panel today to talk about AMATIC uh, 101. Um, we have Tim Britt, Kevin Doctor, Todd Stein, uh, Natalie Vega Rhodes, and Judy Williams, who are here to speak with you. And we'll also be speaking on behalf of Turi Siski and Crystal Wiggins. Uh, this is sponsored by AMATIC, so the views expressed by the presenters are not necessarily the views of AMATIC. Uh, any commercial product endorsements are not uh, mentioned are not endorsed by AMATIC. Uh, I want to thank McGraw-Hill for sponsoring the webinar series. And I will, um, I will step back and let uh, Judy begin the PowerPoint and let the panelists uh, begin by introducing themselves as their turn comes up and enjoy the webinar. Thank you, Pat. Well, shall we continue? I'm Kevin Doctor, the conference coordinator for AMATIC. Eventually my picture might pop up. It's a younger picture of me, so it looks pretty good. I'll keep it for a while. You know, we simply want to welcome you all. We're excited to have you here today. We're even more excited to have you coming to Milwaukee here in a couple of weeks. Our purpose on this particular webinar is kind of to let you know what's going to happen before you come to Milwaukee. Give you an idea of what's going on at the conference site, in both the actual meeting rooms, where they're located, what you can find, and what's happening outside of the conference. And we've got a brief agenda on the next page that we can quickly take a look at. Oh, let's go the other way, Judy. See, you watched the Nats too late last night. <laughs> We want to give you some basic ideas. We're going to talk a little bit about the conference app, what you can what you use to find information. We want to help you understand the terminology we tend to use. You know, we've been involved in the conference for so long, we don't even think about it and realize that other people may be going, what do you mean by a theme session and all these other, other terms that we use? So we're going to talk about the conference and try to help you out, give you an idea of what to do when you're there and just where to go, what happens. I'm also speaking for Turi. Turi Suski is our local events coordinator. She has provided a wealth of information for us, has done a great job in Milwaukee. If you look at the pictures you see, we're gonna show you, it's amazing. The conference is a little bit unique this year. We're going to hold all of our sessions at the Wisconsin Center, which is the picture you see in front of you, and not use the hotels for many of the meetings. We are staying in two different hotels, which we'll talk a little bit about later but all of the sessions will be in that particular building, including our hospitality area. Yes, it will be the palm garden area. Big trivia question, why are there palm trees in Wisconsin? If you can tell us why there's palm trees in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, we'll figure out something to give you. There is a reason for it. Terry's listed the hours there for our hospitality area. It is in the open hallway. It's very accessible. You're not going to miss it. We've got tables for people to sit. We'll provide all kinds of snacks. Good location to stop and ask our local, local people, where should I go to dinner tonight? We'll have a sign-up list so people can actually sign up and go out if they're coming alone. We don't want people to have to wander out alone by themselves. So, you know, it really becomes the center of a lot of activity during the conference. When you're stuck and don't know what to do, you swing by the hospitality area and say, hey, what should I do now? And someone will definitely give you, you know, their advice. Now, as you go around the city, you know, most people are telling me they haven't been to Milwaukee before. They're excited. There's lots of things to do. You saw the Harley and Davidson Museum fly by there. That museum's probably about a half a mile away from where we're staying. Great place to go and look at things. Other museums, in you know, the upper left-hand corner, you see this picture of the Milwaukee Art Museum. It looks like it's blurry. That's because it's a still action. I don't know what you want to call this thing. It's a picture of the actual wings of the museum opening up. They physically open up, but they're the size of the, of the wings on a 747. So it's really cool to see them up and down and where they move. But there are a variety of other museums that are located in Milwaukee. And so when you, you're in the city, you want to take some time and just get out and enjoy a few of the things. Of course, close by, we have theater. And yes, Hamilton is showing in Milwaukee. It closes on November 17th, which is Sunday night, the last day of the conference. So if you want to look out and try to get Hamilton tickets, I would suggest you go to the AMATIC Facebook page where we've posted a link to that. But the Marcus Center is very close to the actual 
conference center, the convention center, so probably two blocks away. That, and there's also a Milwaukee's Buck game, Bucks game going on, which we post about on Facebook too. <coughs> Food, I'm not even sure where to start. You'll notice the, uh, Mar the uh, Bloody Mary in the left-hand corner. That's not really a Bloody Mary, that's a meal. It, it is a, it, they seriously make them like this. I mean, it's just ridiculous how large they are. You know, the mill restaurant, the old looking one, is what's called Mater's German Fair. It's, it's full of all kinds of authentic German food. Public market's a unique place. That's probably about a half a mile from the, the convention center. Many open area restaurants and vendors in the public market. It's a lot like Seattle's public market, where you can just stop from vendor to vendor, pick something up, make sure you pick up the fried cheese curds. You, you can't be in Milwaukee without having cheese curds or custard. Frozen custard was invented in Milwaukee, supposedly, and you can find it in many locations. So there's a wealth of places to eat. And of course, what is Milwaukee famous for? It's beer. Take a brewery tour. If you've got an evening free, you want to get a little bit, the Lakefront Brewery is one our local committee recommends. They think this is probably the best brewery tour. But there are many, many different options here in the city. You can go to the big breweries or the small ones like this and, and choose what you want. So, Riverwalk, oh, not the picture I expected. I'm one ahead of you guys. The Riverwalk, how far away is the river? I'm trying to remember when I walked there. It's about three to four blocks away from the con convention center. You've got three miles of sidewalks all along the river running right downtown Milwaukee. Handicapped accessible, easy to get to, restaurants up and down on both sides, and some very interesting statues you can take pictures with. Oh, there he is. The Bronze Fawns, we all know that Happy Days was situated in Milwaukee, and they have dedicated a, a statue to Henry Winkler, and his picture on the left. Yeah, it's amazing when you walk by that, how many people are standing there taking pictures, giving you the thumbs up, of course. So make sure you stop by the Bronze Fawns, take a picture, go out to eat, have a good evening sometime. Giving me to my stuff now. <laughs> Let's take a look at the actual location where the meetings are going to be held. We're in the Wisconsin Center. Very easy to get around the Wisconsin Center. It's two floors. There are access points from each of the hotels. You know, in the upper left-hand corner on the picture, you'll see the, uh, the picture to the right, yes, where Judy's highlighting for us. You'll see the walkway coming in from the Hilton, Milwaukee. That takes you directly across the street into the hotel. Lower right-hand corner on that second floor is the walkway over to the Hyatt Hotel, the Hyatt Regency. So both hotels are connected to the Wisconsin Center. You'll come in on the second floor in both hotels and have to move down to take an escalator down to the first floor where you see the registration area mark. We will have registration down there on that first night. You don't wanna miss registration. I would suggest you come in around five o'clock and spend, expect to spend a couple hours. Bring your dancing shoes because we have a live polka band and we have some instructors to teach us how to polka during registration. That will happen Wednesday evening. Judy just circled on the left-hand side of the first floor the location of the Palm Gardens, the hospitality area. They are right off the escalators coming from the second floor down. You'll notice the numbers of the rooms, the 101, 102, 103, and the same thing on the second floor, divided into various sections, A, B, C, and D, easy to get to. When you see in the program or in the app, a room number, a physical number, it's in the Wisconsin Center. If you're going to a focus group, you've been invited to a focus group, or you're still around for Sunday morning sessions, they will be in the Hilton Hotel, the Hilton Milwaukee next door. All of those rooms are named for various beers and other people in Milwaukee. It's just an interesting situation always when you look at hotels and how they get their name to the rooms. Most of them actually told me were named after people, which happened to be the names of several beers too. So you'll find the Schlitz room and the Pabst room and a few others. But all of our sessions, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, will be held there. Registration opens Wednesday evening, four o'clock. Stop in early, make sure you get your registration materials if you can't get them there. It opens Thursday morning. Oh, Thursday morning. I think that's a typo and I never caught it before. Thursday, our registration opens at 7. It's a 7 a.m. registration on Thursday and Friday morning. We're open early. Again, polka lessons, Wednesday night, 5 to 7. You don't want to miss this polka band. They build themselves as an acoustic polka band. 
One thing you'll notice when you come into the hotel from the Hilton, the Milwaukee Center on the left there, you're going to have to go down a set of stairs or an escalator. These are what are known as the polka stairs. And they're up right up on the second floor, that escalator coming in from the Hilton by the Red Arrow is. Why are they called the polka stairs? Well, you've probably all walked up and down stairs that play music. These actually play polkas when you walk up and down. And ironically, there's a bunch of pictures of their famous polka band members, and one of those people will actually be the band playing for us here. He's in that group. So I want you to slide back to the hotels, Judy. Hopefully you've booked your room. We do have a few nights available yet, but most of the hotels are getting close to being filled up. So that's good for us. We wanted that. The Hilton is a very old, historic hotel, built in the early 20s. You're going to find lots of marble, big chandeliers. The Hyatt is a modern atrium hotel, very large rooms at the Hyatt. So if you're staying there, you got all that space. And the Hyatt is extremely close to all of the restaurants. There are many restaurants just out the back door of the Hyatt. So if you're in that location, you don't have to walk far to find a variety of food. Very good Thai restaurant right outside the Hyatt, by the way. Ate there last summer when I was visiting Milwaukee. So both hotels are very nice. They're very accessible. We've got a great conference rate. I'm assuming you've all booked your room. If you haven't, you should do it right away while we still have some rooms available. And now, one last thing I think before I'm done, the conference app. As first time attendees, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you find out as much as you can about the conference. One way to do that is through the conference app. That QR code you see there should take you directly to a site where you download the app. We are using Guidebook again. The app has been published as of about 25 minutes ago. So the app is available right now. It will be updated throughout the next few weeks as the conference rolls around. There's still many things I need to add to that. But it's gonna give you the entire program. You can run it on the Wi-Fi. We have Wi-Fi throughout the Wisconsin Center. The app will give you all the information you need, the passwords and the SSID. All of our session evaluations are done on the app. Each session you'll scroll down to the bottom where it says evaluation and answer the six or seven questions. Very simple, provides great information for the conference committee for planning in the future. And we, we tend to use that an awful lot. It allows you to log in. It's got its own Facebook type feature where you can message people back and forth on the app. We've got lists of restaurants and Google Maps to those restaurants. And we've tried to break the restaurants up this year based upon their distance from the actual convention center. So you can decide if you want to do something really close or venture a little bit farther by just looking at the list of restaurants where they are. All kinds of information available there. I really encourage you to download the app soon. I know from talking to our app sponsor, which is Cengage Learning this year, they are sending out an email in about a week with information about the app and how to download it. I will probably follow that up a few days later with another email to everyone who's registered for the conference on how do you get the app. So get it early, take a look at it, see what's there and find out what's happening. And if you have questions, let me know. What do I think you should do at the conference? Most of us in the conference committee now have been at so many conferences, we can't keep them straight anymore. But there's a few things you should take advantage of. Join a committee. I mean, committees are really kind of the lifeblood of the organization. You want to get involved with people really interested in one particular topic, you join a committee in that, whether it's statistics, developmental math, placement assessment. We now have 10 different committees and four different or AMATIC networks that have specific focuses in each one of them. Pick one and go to it. The Friday Night Ignite event, if you've never seen an Ignite event, you might want to stop into that. You've got many people who are doing their presentations it's 15 seconds a slide, and you've got five minutes to get it done. They're quick, they're fast, they're fun. You never know what's going to happen at an Ignite session. As we mentioned, hit the hospitality area. You want to stop there to find out what's happening. You want to make sure you'll hit the exhibit hall, as Todd's going to talk about next. We do have some special guests on Thursday afternoon in the exhibit hall. We'll let you in a little secret. It is the famous Milwaukee Brewers Racing Sausages. If you've ever been to a Milwaukee Brewers game, you can't miss the different sausages from the area. They're only about 10 feet tall. So you will see them. Stop, take some pictures with them during that opening night. And finally, take some time for yourselves. I mean, I, I firmly believe if you go to every single session, every day of the conference, you're just going to get burned out. Take some time. Skip a session. Meet with some people. Make some new friends. 
the most valuable information you may get will come from people outside of sessions. Spend the time and talk to people. It's always so nice to hear that you know, things aren't always so bad at your own place. There are other people who may have it worse. It always made me feel a little better thinking I'm not alone when I came up with all these issues I dealt with and I found people across the country that had the same issues. So get outside of the sessions, talk to people, go out to dinner, have a little fun. So let me turn it over to Todd and he'll take it from here. Good afternoon. My name's Todd Stein. Uh, I'm from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania at Harrisburg Area Community College. And I'm pretty excited this year because this is my first time as the exhibits chair. And it's been an interesting but a whirlwind full of fun. So I'm excited to share with you what I've done so far. So our commercial presentations. Well, you might be wondering, what are they? Well, these are from particular vendors, textbook companies, and other uh, companies as well that will do a presentation specifically for their product. Okay, and they are listed in the program. Uh, so we have presentations this year from McGraw Hill, Cengage, Pearson, Edfinity, Educo International, Hox Learning, Wiley, Lumen Learning, Derivata, and Top Hat. Uh, you might have heard of Top Hat. Uh, I was just on Facebook a couple minutes ago before we started, and I saw an ad for Top Hat, so I thought that was pretty cool. Um, of course, our corporate sponsors are McGraw-Hill and Hawks Learning, so make sure you check out a commercial presentation if you're interested in any of their products or specifically what they have to offer. My next slide is the grand opening, Thursday at 4.30, and this will immediately open after the keynote address. Uh, it's a dedicated time. There are no sessions going on at that point. Uh, the exhibitors will be providing some goodies. There is a scavenger hunt. Uh, you will get the ticket in your uh, registration packet once you, re or once you uh, register. And in that is a list of, uh, I believe it's 29 questions about our vendors and the exhibitors. And you need to visit each one of their uh, booths and find out the answer to that question. Once you've completed your scavenger hunt ticket, there'll be a box located in the uh, exhibits hall where you can deposit it. And then sometime during the day on, Kevin, Saturday morning? Yeah, Saturday morning, we will be drawing uh, winners for door prizes that have been provided by the exhibitors. Uh, also, make sure to check out our corporate partners. They will be right up front, McGraw-Hill and Hawks Learning. Uh, let's see. Next is on Friday, we have the hours of 11.10 to 11.45 and 1.15 to 2. And again, these are dedicated times where you can visit just them and not miss out on any of the other exciting things that will be happening. Also on Friday from two o'clock to 5 p.m. We will have a cash bar and that should be an exciting time. So please come join us, mingle with the exhibitors and new friends that you have met. And then Saturday morning, we will have a dedicated time of 10 to 10.45 a.m. Uh, I also wanna thank the exhibitors. We would like you to thank the exhibitors for supporting AMATIC, for providing over $100,000 in their support and for holding evening social events. So you may have gotten an invite from one of them. Uh, here's my favorite slide. These are all the vendors and the exhibitors that we have this year in uh, Milwaukee. Uh, of course, McGraw-Hill and Hawks Learning are our corporate partners. And every vendor is listed on there more than once. Um, so when you go back and review this recording, if you do, you can kind of pause here and look at all of the vendors that will actually be here. So some of my, idea, my ideas to consider, um, what courses are you considering adopting a new text for? Are you changing things up and looking at pathways? Have you already done pathways? Uh, all the vendors will have things for you to consider. What software questions might you have that might be addressed by any of the vendors or any of the other uh, exhibitors that we have there? I too would like to echo what Kevin said about Take the time to meet other people. 
and when you're in a session, introduce yourself to the persons and people in front of you, behind you, beside you, and have a conversation. Uh, it is really nice to know that there are other places that have the same issues and you can either commiserate or you can really talk about good ideas to uh, combat it. So I believe that's my last slide and no, it isn't, I'm sorry. So again, the scavenger hunt tickets will be in your conference bag. You're gonna get the answers to the provided questions. You're gonna turn it in by Friday midday for prizes and the prizes will be given out Saturday morning. There'll be an announcement as well as a whiteboard posted somewhere at the beginning of the exhibit hall uh, where I will list the names in case you're not present uh, when we call your name. So I'm gonna turn it over to Natalie Vega Rhodes. Hi everyone, I'm Natalie and I'm the Assistant Conference Coordinator. This is my first year in this role. Prior to that, I was Advertising Chair. And so Judy, if you'll go to the next slide. This is Crystal, she is our Advertising Chair this year. So we wanted to introduce both of us. So with that being said, you heard Todd talk a little bit about our corporate partners. So our corporate partners are Hawks and McGraw-Hill. These are companies who have chosen to work with us in a larger capacity than some of our other vendors, and we appreciate all of their support. So we definitely want to thank them. Uh, they are front and center at the, at the uh, top of the exhibit hall or the front of the exhibit hall, I guess. And uh, you'll definitely be able to see them. And so you also heard Todd mention all the sponsorship opportunities and how much support our vendors do give us. And so this, these are some of the ways that, that they have supported us. So Hawks and McGraw-Hill have uh, agreed to sponsor our Chat and Chew. Additionally, Newton is sponsoring, Newton Awiley brand is sponsoring our name badge holders. Cengage, you heard Kevin say was sponsoring our app. And you also heard Kevin talk about the hospitality suite. Pearson is sponsoring some food at the hospitality suite on Wednesday night. So you'll definitely want to check it out. And uh, lastly, which I'll mention again on, I think my next slide, McGraw-Hill is also sponsoring a talk by John Urschel. So with that being said, these are some of the highlights that we are so excited about. I saw someone in the chat had mentioned that they were a student of Alan Zolman. He's one of our featured speakers. But so some of our featured speakers are Francis Sue, who is on the left over there. His talk is our Thursday keynote right before the grand opening of exhibits. And it's called Mathematics for Human Flourishing. You can find information about all of these on the app. But essentially, uh, Francis Sue has been advancing the message that math can help people flourish. And he will explain why he believes this is an important message, especially for educators. On Friday morning, first thing, John Urschel will begin by sharing his story, and that will serve as an entry point into a discussion of education equity, and he'll also talk about some ideas for how to close the gap. Also on Friday is Alan Zalman, who is presenting on making students as smart as their phones and fixing their common errors. Oh, can you go back, Judy? <laughs> And so I'm going to read his, his little description because it's really fun. Here are six research-based ideas how students learn mathematics while fixing students' most common algebra, trigonometry, and calculus misunderstandings with the three concepts supporting students' persistence in studying mathematics offered with a dash of humor all in one run-on sentence. <laughs> so that'll be fun. On Saturday at breakfast, we have James Tanton, and his talk is A Dozen Proofs That One Equals Two, A Misguided Review of Mathematics. You definitely won't want to miss that. So he says that Guidobaldo del Monte, who is a patron and friend of Galileo Galilei, believed he had witnessed the creation of something out of nothing when he established mathematically that zero equals one. James Tanton does not claim to be so bold, but he offers that he's willing to prove that one equals two multiple times over and wants to know, will you be able to find fault with any of these proofs? Mike Steele is also our other featured speaker and he will be Saturday morning after breakfast. And so his talk is on content pedagogy and field, new partnerships across the six through 16 continuum. And so he talks about the partnership between school districts, two and four year colleges, and specifically as it pertains to math education. And he will invite you to discuss your own context and challenges and identify reasonable next steps to generate or revitalize partnerships in your own institutions and hometowns. Natalie, so, can I say something quick? Yes. 
please go to our Facebook page, the Amatic Facebook page. You can scroll down and find previews of both Francis Sue and James Tanton's talks. They sent us some videos to preview their talks. When you watch James Tanton's preview, you're going to be in that chair watching him very closely. It's an <laughs> amazing video he's on. Thank you. So one of my uh, main projects has been the poster session. And these are fun. I picked some of these pictures because they were past poster sessions and also uh, as our poster sessions has, have evolved over the years. Uh, you can find the descriptions for all of these poster sessions in the program or on the app. Again, definitely download it. It's super fun. We have, um, everyone loved the collaboration and the communication so much that we wanted to make sure that we found ways to enhance that. And so it's a great opportunity opportunity to talk one-on-one -on -one with folks about what they've been doing. You can learn about uh, ideas from other colleges, as well as projects that are implemented by Project Access, which is a really great project that's hosted by AMATIC. And if you'll switch to the next slide, Judy. Project Access is for faculty who are in the first three years of their uh, full-time teaching career. And actually, Crystal and I both came through Project Access, so it has helped to develop some of the leadership in AMATIC, too. I know many other people that you will run into. You'll see it on their badge as well. But essentially, what it does is it tries to help new faculty become effective, uh, whatever, you know, in their institutions, and to develop projects and innovations and ideas Oh, yay! Kathy says that Project Access is sponsoring their trip. We are excited to have you too, Kathy. And so I'm excited to meet you. I'll probably meet you. So, but in, in, in essence, the first year you get to, you form a cohort, you get to meet other people in their first three years, and you learn a lot about the organization as well as what you might want to do to develop your own classroom. Then you're asked to implement a project. And so in your second year of AMATIC, you're then presenting a poster session to talk about the project that you've implemented over the years. So if you are in your first three years, we definitely encourage you to apply for this. If you are no longer in your first three years, tell all your friends who are. And so with that being said, I would now like to turn it over to Judy, who is amazing, and she will take it from here. Well, thank you, Natalie, and everybody else so far who shared. You have heard a lot of words and a lot of information, and your brain may be feeling kind of like this right now, but let me just give you a little bit of information about the program itself. You will see the words, have a session, go to a mini session, go to a workshop. You've already heard about commercial sessions where the focus is on how to use particular products. But our sessions and so forth are just for your colleagues to share their ideas about teaching, pedagogy, what's going on at their school, other ideas for you. Usually in these sessions and especially the workshops, there's some way that you're going to be actively involved in what's going on. Um, you can look at the program, if you're interested in a specific area such as statistics or instructional strategies or just the new AMATIC impact document, look for these letters on the, the program itself that will kind of guide you into various emphasis that's going on in that particular session. When we say sessions, they're 50 minutes long. Many sessions, there'll be two 25-minute talks in the same room but you are welcome to change rooms if something else catches your attention for one of those half hours. But please, as Kevin already said and Todd, make sure you take some time to reflect on what you're hearing and doing, talk to other people, meet new friends. I've met friends for the last 20, 25 years that I still get in touch with and contact and look forward to seeing at these conferences. So take advantage of that, form your own new friendships. And now I'll turn this over to Tim Britt to tell you a little bit more. Okay, I'm gonna give you a little bit more. I'm Tim Britt, I'm from Jackson, Tennessee, and I'm the Assistant Program Chair Coordinator. And I wanna say just a couple of things before I get started on my, uh, what I'm going to really talk about. Uh, I, I'm like Judy, your brain is probably that big mush of stuff, and it's probably gonna stay that way during the conference. So I'm gonna offer just a couple of tidbits that I like to, to do. Take the app, 
look at the app now and start planning because if you don't you can waste a lot of time just running around trying to see what to do and then all of a sudden two hours have gone by and you haven't done anything so uh take take your app and plan it there's a few things you don't want to miss at all there's you know the breakfast there's luncheons there's the the main speakers a few things you want to make sure that you go and see then plan your sessions you know say oh i like this session or this session and more than likely there's going to be one hour that there's three sessions that you want to see and then another hour there's going to be nothing that you want to see so you'll have to prioritize your stuff but your app will let you do that you can mark in your app this is my schedule that i want to do and your app will keep up for you tell you where to go and what to do and you don't have to keep up with the schedule but if you'll make your schedule at least you'll have something to go by and you won't waste as much time as you would just trying to run around and say okay what is there all to do and trying to do it at the last minute that you can optimize your time in that way i find it to be very beneficial i don't do everything that's on the schedule but at least i'm not wasting as much time if i uh, do a lot of planning uh, ahead of time so the app is wonderful for uh, for that i'm going to talk about one of our uh, types of presentation judy if you want to go to the next slide We've only done this now for just a very few years, a couple of years, uh, a type of thing that we do called chat and chew. This is during the uh, 150 to 240 hour on Thursday. It's a little bit different from the regular presentations for the sessions that we do. Uh, it's a big room with tables, as you can see, kind of like it looks in the picture here. Uh, and there's about uh, uh, 20 plus uh, conversations going on in the room at the same time. Uh, arranged by topics and these topics are in your in your program so you can see what the topics are before you go and uh, we'll have uh, refreshments light refreshments that are, will be furnished by our sponsors McGraw Hill and Hawks Learning and what you'll do is every, uh, for, uh, in 15 minutes these speakers will talk about the topic that they're going to talk to you about and then a bell will ring and you'll move to a different table for 15 minutes if, if for a different topic if you want to and we'll do that three times during this uh, during this uh, period so it's a good time to get to, uh, a lot of knowledge in in a little quick time. We've chosen topics that lends itself a little bit better to a shorter time frame than they would need for a full discussion. So it's a little bit more uh, that type of topic. It's a lot of fun. I think you'll really enjoy this. And if you look at the list of topics, you'll see why these are chosen for these type of presentations. So be sure to look over your program uh, and the app for the chat and chew session, which is on Thursday at 150. I think you'll uh, really enjoy that. Uh, next I'll talk about is uh, presiders. Hopefully some of you have signed up to be a presider over a session. They kind of just monitor the session, lead the session a little bit for the uh, uh, presenter th themselves. Uh, if you have signed up to be a presider, uh, when you uh, register, there'll be a, a registration at the registration desk, there'll be a, a sign that says uh, presider. You'll pick up your presider packet from one of, one of our team here. And inside the packet will be a little bit further detailed instructions on how to, uh, how to uh, do your uh, presentation, uh, how to preside over it, what to do, and how to keep up with it, a little bit of information about that. Also in your packet will be a, a ticket that you'll register for uh, and turn in with your uh, uh, evaluation for the session that you preside over. And we're gonna draw for two free nights hotel uh, at the next year's conference in Spokane. So make sure if you are. If you haven't signed up to be a presider, it's not too late. We have we do have our slots filled right now, but there's always cancellations. So if you fill out, we'll hold your name on the list and something does come up that's canceled. Or during the conference, if you just want to stop by from time to time at the desk and say, hey, is anybody canceled or do you need me? We would clap our hands and hug you if we do need you. So please uh, check it time to time. And if you are interested in being one next year at the next conference, you know, keep that in mind. It's a wonderful opportunity. It's not much to do, just kind of monitors and make sure everything's in place and, and that kind of stuff. Count the people that go. We just like to keep a little bit of uh, a monitor on what's going on in our session. So it's a wonderful opportunity. Uh, that leads into my next slide, which next Wednesday at uh, four o'clock Eastern, three o'clock Central, we are going to have another uh, webinar on uh, for presiders and presenters for the conference. This does not mean that you have to be a presider and presenter if you're interested, because maybe next year you want to be one, or if you are a presider presenter this year, uh, join us next week. We're going to give you more details on just that function itself of, of presiding and uh, of presenting, just to give you a little more detail about what that entails and what you'll be doing. Uh, so be sure and register for that for next Wednesday if uh, if you are going to be doing that. Uh, and
and again, if you're in, just interested, you know, be, be sure and join it if you want to just see what's going on or what we say uh, for those. And again, you might be able to substitute this year if, if uh, opening comes up, if you're interested in doing that. Uh, okay, so we're, that's all that we have for you today as far as a formal presentation. Uh, so we're going to stop now and let you all uh, 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 ask questions and maybe one of us on the panel can answer those or I'll let uh, somebody who had, I think Kevin has monitored the chat as we've gone along. I think, I think he's answered several of your questions as we've gone. So if you do have questions, if you want to type those into the chat, then we will get somebody to uh, answer those. I'm going to jump in here very quickly because Tim, you said luncheons go to the luncheons and i can't believe we didn't put that somewhere in here already but on friday there are regional lunches so it's a smaller get together than having everybody at the conference but it's by the region of the country where you live if you're not sure what region you're in there's northeast mid-atlantic southeast and all the way across the country but if you're not sure where you belong your state is listed in the program but make sure you go to those. It'll give you an opportunity to meet more people from your state or just from the same area of the country where you are, and you'll get more information about AMATIC. So one more thing to add to that overloaded brain. Yeah. And the breakfast and the luncheon are included in your registration process too. So those are those are have already been included in your process. Yes. One other thing we forgot to mention, which is not unusual because there's so much happening at the conference. We have many first time attendees, you know, listening in on the webinar right now. We are holding a special drawing this year for first time attendees only. That's true. You will need to pick up your first time attendee ribbon, which is handed out when you register, place it on your name badge, and then you'll have to hit the hospitality area to actually drop in an entry form. The prize will be two nights at next year's conference at one of our conference hotels. So we can cut your lodging expenses down greatly if you win. I know we talk fast because we're very excited about the conference. <laughs> you know, all of us have been involved with the conference for a number of years, either just as attendees or now planning it. Please, please don't hesitate to ask questions. I know Natalie's answered quite a few. I've answered a couple. Beverly's chipped in for us. Thank you so much. Sarah helped with the project access questions. There's been a lot of questions in the chat. What questions do you guys have? Anything else you want to ask? Kevin, I'm going to ask this. You, you mentioned the app, and one of the things that you've asked for is for the presenters to send in materials early. Um, I know from past, um, like Tim said, so there's so many sessions that it's hard to pick and choose. Uh, if you get the app, uh, many of the presenters will have their materials uploaded. So that might be a good way to preview what some of the sessions are um, because you, you may miss a good one uh, going to another good one. So this, it might help you make uh, decisions on which, is, which sessions to prioritize. So um, Kevin, can you, is there any more you wanna say about uh, that part? Well, Patrick just asked, is the app available to download? Yes, it is. You need to first download the guidebook app. And so, depending on what type of device you have, Apple or Android, go to their app store and download guidebook. It is a free app. Once you've downloaded the guidebook app, just search for Amatic and look for the 45th annual conference. We made it public, we published it today, just before the actual webinar, so you could have access to it. So you are the first people to know the app is available. Also, uh, it looks like there was a question about lanyards. Uh, no, the name badge and printing, all of that comes with a lanyard on it. And so you don't need to bring your own. No worries. And we thank Newton, a Wiley brand for that. I'm just reaching behind me to find samples of our lanyards. Here's one of them. <laughs> we have lanyards every year. So you'll get your own lanyard and stuff with your registration packet. Yes. Breakfast and lunch. The only two meals included in your conference registration are the Friday lunch, our regional lunch, and the Saturday breakfast. Those are the only two meals. There will be a lot of food Wednesday evening in hospitality. There will be snacks throughout the day in hospitality, just some you know, little things here and there to help you get through the day. We do want you to get out in the city a little bit, have some, some time out and, and visit the city and see what's there. Kevin, I think we had a question on uh, family members. Did you want to take that one? Yep. yep, I'm trying to find it. It's scrolling through so fast. <laughs> family members can attend. Yes, did you, when you registered, you had a chance to 
register someone as a guest at no cost. The only cost for family members for guests would be if they wanted to come to the meals, they would have to purchase the meal separately. And there we simply charge what the, the facilities charge us. We don't make any money on our meals at all. If they are mathematics professionals, we do ask they want to uh, register. Judy, what's happening? <laughs> If they are math professionals, we do ask they register for the conference. But if they're simply your spouse or a child, yes, you can you can register them as, as a guest even on site at no cost. On your own for dinner, yes, you are. Find a group. That's the I mean, some of my most enjoyable memories of conferences are going out to dinner with groups. <laughs> you sometimes just hook up the group with people you don't know and you have a great time. And we will have sign-up sheets available in our hospitality area for people wanting to find someone to go out to dinner with. Milwaukee is truly a foodie city. There are so many different choices. It's just amazing. I'm trying to scan the questions and see what we have there. Did we miss something? Uh, how necessary is it to have technology at the different sessions? So that is a great question. And what you will see is noted in the in the little program description, there's an icon that lets you know when you need uh, or when you would benefit from having one. But as Kevin said, there is Wi-Fi throughout the conference. So you can always use your phone. You can always use your laptop throughout. Mm -hmm. Yes, the same thing is true on the app. We've placed a little tablet icon on all the sessions where it's valuable to have some type of device at that session. Kathy, uh, the best way to connect with others that may be flying in at the same time, uh, I would probably suggest uh, make sure you get the app and then register as a member of the app and you can converse back and forth. Uh, if I'm correct, right, Kevin, we can do yeah. that? Yes, you can. You will see all the people that are coming to the uh, conference that have signed up for the app. I just did it uh, about 10 minutes ago, and it took like two minutes to do. So you can do that and be in touch with people and see when they're coming in and do the potential ride sharing. Uh, yes, Kimberly, only the one breakfast and the one lunch is provided. That's it. Nothing else during the days. So it's just the two meals. And the Wednesday evening hospitality uh, sponsored by Pearson. Right. As far as connecting with people to the hotel, this is not a foolproof plan, but I've noticed in past years, quite often when I'm uh, waiting in the airport for the flight to come in, if you politely eavesdrop on the people sitting around you, you can kind of sometimes hear other people talking about math stuff. And at most conferences, I've generally found other people heading to the conference uh, in the airport. So yes depending on uh, how many, uh, where you're coming from, that might be an option. It's, it's far from foolproof though. <laughs> <laughs> when you hear people talking about parabolas and integrals in a public setting, it's, <laughs> we, we kind of tip ourselves off. <laughs> Very much so. There's been a couple of questions about transportation. There is shuttle service available. It's through Go Right Way. It's just a regular shuttle service. It's $31 round trip last time I checked. I think it'd be cheaper to take an Uber, I'll be honest, especially if you get a couple of people to join you. And Uber does serve the, the hotel and the airport there. There is a public bus if you really want to be daring. <laughs> Adventure. Well, it'd probably cost you two bucks in the public bus and take you 45 minutes to get into town. <laughs> it goes right by the hotel. Does it stop there? It does stop right at the corner. <laughs> There are lots of options. I mean, our goal is to make sure you guys are ready to come and enjoy the conference. You know, see, we've taken some of your worries away, we hope, before you get there. It, it's always a wonderful conference. You know, meeting people, seeing new friends, making new friends, seeing old friends. It doesn't get old. You know, as Pat has said, I mean, once you come, you kind of get hooked. I mean, you, you make a group of friends and you plan to come back each year and it doesn't take long you're coming to your 10th or your 15th conference. That's an old person talking, by the way. <laughs> well, thank you guys for taking time. And you know, we appreciate you taking the time to tune in. And if you have colleagues at your department, suggest they watch the webinar once it's online. We will post the recording and everything.
Yeah, we will, uh, as soon as this is over, um, I'll, I'll download the, uh, the recording. Um, Judy, if you can send me the PowerPoint, I'll try to get it to George as quickly as possible because I know this one's a little time sensitive so people can see it uh, to make preparations. Um, are there any more questions from the audience? The only question I have, Kevin, are you going to tell us why there's palm trees in Wisconsin or are you going to leave that? Uh, the you really want to know? A little it's longer. supposed to be a question for you to figure out. Okay, it's simple. You know, what is Milwaukee known for? I would say beer. Beer, <laughs> beer. exactly. It's the city that beer built. I mean, that is one of its nicknames. You know, Wait, it, no, it, the frozen custard. That's uh, what it well, is. Well, that's not the beer. In the early <laughs> days, all of the, all of the breweries would put up a beer tent. And they started bringing in palm trees into the beer tents always just for some ambiance. And so when the Wisconsin Center was built, they decided to put palm trees in the actual center, real palm trees, just because of the history with all the beer gardens. <laughs> so when you see the palm trees, think about a cold one. <laughs> okay. Are there any other questions or comments? Okay, let me wrap this up with a few. If not, let me wrap this up with a few. Um, Judy, I'm going to stop your sharing and continue. I have this open here. Okay, so thank you for participating. Um, if, if those of you who are participating are not members, um, you know, please consider. Uh, we do these webinars roughly every three weeks. Um, it's not a, a hard and fast schedule, but depending on when they come out, try to schedule them about three weeks apart. Um, we, as uh, I believe Kevin alluded to, we do have a Facebook page, so please uh, look at that out, like it. You get a lot of good information there, especially as it's getting closer to the conference time. Um, a lot of other professional development opportunities, um, webinars, traveling workshops. Um, there is a, uh, as far as I understand, still a position open. Uh, I've kind of heard there's uh, I don't know if anyone here can speak to that. Um, I've heard that they're in the process of getting, maybe getting this filled, but if not, you, know, you might want to consider uh, the professional development coordinator. Uh, it's a great way to get involved. Um, we'll try to get the, this webinar uploaded as quickly as possible for those um, to review or to share with their colleagues if they weren't able to be here today. And uh, you would uh, take a few minutes to evaluate the webinar. You can either go to the link provided um, or you can scan the QR code to go directly to it. Um, we'll leave this open for a couple days uh, to give people a chance to do this uh, before we close the survey. Uh, I would like to thank all of the, uh, the panelists today for not only putting this webinar together, but all the work they do throughout the year to get the conference re uh, ready. It's, it's an amazing conference. I've, I've made it my, my number one conference every year. And as long as I'm able to, I'm going to be there. You, you get so much information and energy out of it. Uh, I'm happy to see so many first time people attending. Uh, I believe that's all we have for the webinar. Uh, if you have any more questions or comments, feel free to uh, add them in the chat room as long as people hang around. And uh, if not, we look forward to meeting you all in Milwaukee. Thank you all for coming. Thank you. Yep, see you all soon. Bye-bye. I'm going to, there we go, I'm going to stop the recording.